I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I cannot be defeated and I will not quit. Welcome to Rama Praise, a worldwide broadcast bringing hope, help, and healing for over 25 years from Kenneth Hagen Ministries and Rama Bible Church in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. And now, here are your hosts, Pastors Kenneth and Lynette Hagen. Hello and welcome to Rama Praise. We're glad you're with us today. You know, hun, a lot of people uh, ask us sometimes, well, what about Rhema? What, how long have you been doing it? Well, uh, Rhema has... Uh, Rhema Praise, we've been uh, doing over 25, 25 years. 25 years. Yes. I've been at, you know, in the ministry myself, 63 years. Yes. I've been here. <laughs> I started Rhema, what, when I was 35. So, and in 1985, we started Rhema Bible Church. You know, uh, we... We don't ever say a whole lot about, but we, we've got thousands and thousands of, of copies of books that have, and, and CDs and, and DVDs that have gone around the world. Yes. We have 282 school, Rhema Bible Training Colleges in 54 nations. Yes, uh, we have over 100,000 graduates yeah, all worldwide. over the world. Yes. yes. And we, the churches and ministers all over the world. We have people in every walk of life that have graduated from Rhema. I know in, in one of the one of the islands, the, the people that are, that are in the leadership of the country have, have, are Rhema grads. Yes. And so that just tells you a little bit about us, you know. Uh, we have our Living Faith Crusades that we mm -hmm. go out all over the United States. And, and we have special uh, events here on yes, campus. On campus, the yes. special events that we have here. So, you know, that's sort of who we a are. A little bit about us, and right? You that have supported Rama through the years, and you that support Rama Praise with your gifts, we call yes. you Word Partner Club yes. members. You're helping us to to be able to preach the gospel all over the world. That's right. And a Word Partner is simply somebody that prays for us regularly and sends a monthly offer, whatever he can, yes. to help support Rama. So, listen. There's a great message today. I want you to prepare yourself to receive that message right now. And most of you know that pastor, when it comes to special holidays, I, I like to speak to that particular thing. And this is Memorial Day weekend, so if you want a title for this, it's just Memorial Day Sermon. That's just it. All right? You know, Memorial Day is a day of remembrance for those who have died in our nation's service. It was observed on May 30th until 1971. Many of y'all may remember that it was... Uh, always May 30th, whatever day that was, whether it was Sunday or Saturday or whatever, it was May 30th, it was Memorial Day, right? And, but uh, that was changed in, uh, to the last Monday of May. And so now it's, it has become a three-day weekend, I guess you'd call it. Now, the custom for placing flowers on the graves of those that had died in the war began all the way back in May of 1866 in Waterloo, uh, New York. And Waterloo has been recognized by Congress as the official birthplace of Memorial Day. After World War I, the day was set aside to honor all American war deaths. And, you know, this is a solemn time for many families that their loved one gave the ultimate sacrifice that we could sit here today in freedom to worship God. 
I guess the most solemn ceremony that will take place on Memorial Day is the placing of the wreath at the tomb of the unknown soldier in Arlington National Cemetery. But as we celebrate tomorrow, Memorial Day, let's just not let it be become a day that we have off from work or just become a three-day weekend. You know, just as I said a while ago, for those that have lost someone because of a military action, this means more, off to, them, means more to them than just a day off. I, I still remember as a child, of course I was, I was born September 3rd, 1939, so I know World War II, and I remember my mom was, one day was crying, and, and I was about three, I guess, and I asked Dad, I said, well, why is Mom crying? She said, well, one of her friends that she grew up with had the farm right next to their farm, went to school with, has just been killed in the war. You know, every, I think it's every American's duty to recognize this day because of what it means. We honor those that have spilled their blood to make America free, strong, and a nation worth fighting for. And Jesus Christ spilled his blood so that we could be free spiritually. You know, because of these that have paid the ultimate sacrifice, we can preach the word of God freely to, right here today. We can live in peace in our own homes. We can pursue peace and prosperity and happiness. You know, I go to Branson quite often and they honor the veterans and the people up there. And I can't help, and I'm sure that I have comrades here with me that have served that remember some of their buddies that gave the ultimate sacrifice. I still read, and my wife, I'll re, she says I recall it all the time, but I cannot have, go to one of those where they recognize the veterans without thinking about one of the guys that I was in signal school with. I walked off of a plane in Vietnam and took a sniper's bullet right here. I can't help but think about that. And I'm sure there's many of you that are in the same position that I am, that I am in that. People say I bleed red, white, and blue. I do. They have taken so much of the history out of our history books and don't teach it anymore. But history should, as I said earlier, it stands to help us not to go there again. History, it happened, good, bad, and ugly. And some of it shouldn't have happened, but it did. We can't change that but we can change the future and we can honor those that gave their life so we could live free, so we can change things. We need to thank God that we live in a free nation. Many, as I see many of our Rama people that travel to other nations, they're not, they don't have the freedom that we have. Now they have a little freedom, but they don't have the freedom we have. I was in a nation several years ago, and well, it's been <laughs> several, several years ago. And uh, the man said, oh, we've got to hurry to the 
petrol station and get some fuel. And I said, why? He said, well, they did. The government just announced they're closing all the service stations at 5 o'clock today, and they went, won't reopen until 8 o'clock tomorrow, I mean, on, on Monday. And that was Friday afternoon. And I said, what are you talking about? He said, you live in a different country. Think about that. The government can just say, okay, all gas stations will close, and they do. Thank God for our freedom. A memorial is, is a remembrance. You know, let us look at what the Lord says about remembering. I was talking about, I've been talking about our natural memorial, but in Deuteronomy 6, 12 through 15, it says, be careful not to forget the Lord who rescued you from slavery from the land of Egypt. This He's talking to the children of Israel here. You must fear the Lord your God and serve him when you take an oath and you must use, his, his, use only his name. You must not worship any of the gods of the neighboring nations. For the Lord your God who lives among you is a jealous God. His anger flares up against you and will wipe you from the face of the earth. Here, the Lord wants us to remember. He wanted the Israelites to remember that he was the one that delivered them. He wants us to remember that he is the one that has delivered us. You know, sometimes we have uh, short memories. I well remember, and many of you sitting here remember 9-11. On that Wednesday night, we had to open the balcony because of the people that came. But that was short-lived. Joshua 4, 1 through 9, he talk, it says here, and we're, we're, we're talking about my remembrances. When all the people had crossed the Jordan, the Lord said to Joshua, now choose 12 men, one from each tribe, Tell them, take 12 stones from every place where the priests are standing in the middle of the Jordan. Carry them out and pile them up at the place where you will camp tonight. So Joshua called together 12 men he had chosen from one from each tribe. And he told them to go, you know, to do what the Lord had told him to do there, and so they did. And in verse 6 it said, we'll use these stones to build a memorial in the future your children would ask, what do these stones mean? Then you can tell them. They remind us that the Jordan River stopped flowing when the ark of the Lord of the covenant went across. These stones will stand as a memorial among the people of Israel forever. Now, let's drop on down to verses 19 through 24 here and read of that fourth chapter. The people crossed the Jordan on the 10th day of the month, and then they camped at Gilgal, just east of Jericho. It was there at Gilgal that Joshua piled up the 12 stones from the, taken from the river Jordan. Then, he, then Joshua said to the Israelites, in the future when your children ask you, what do these stones mean? Then you can tell them, this is where the Israelites crossed the Jordan on dry land. For your Lord God dried up the river right before your eyes and kept it dry until all were across, just as he did at the Red Sea when he dried it up until we had all crossed. He did this so that all nations of the earth might know that the Lord's hand is powerful and so that you might fear the Lord your God. This was to be something that caused them to remember what God had done. You know, we respond in crisis. And, but however, the good times come and we seem to forget. And things lose their meaning. The Israelites were brought out of bondage. And he brought them across the Red Sea. He brought them across the River Jordan. He conquered all the enemies before them. And here now he is telling them, you need to set up a memorial 
to remember this. And when your children ask, then you tell them. You know, we all have pivotal points in our lives. We all have personal stones, we might call it, that are memorials. You know, if you could recall all of the memories that God has done for you, your, your house wouldn't hold all the stones. You know, it probably would be a good idea to maybe write down a few of these things and go back and read about them ever so often. I know Lynette and I ever so often we will go back if we're driving somewhere in the car together on a road trip and we'll again remember, reminisce back the things that God and, has done for us and where he's brought us from. Every one of you can look back and see where you were in yesteryear and where you are today. Those are, those are things we need to remember because if God told his natural people and we are his spiritual people, if he told them to set up memorials and never forget him and what he had done, then we should do the same thing. I'm still talking about memorial. A memorial is set up to remember. You know, we are clawing our way through life, following God, and sometimes we tend to forget that all of the technology and all of the great things that we have, it's not here just because it's happening. It's here because of God. My dad used to say it all the time. God is the one that's giving ideas to people to help humanity. The devil wants to destroy them. He said, that's God's way of helping the natural man. Come on now. You know. How many of you as youngsters, like I was and me and my sis, it was our duty after, we called it supper back then. It was breakfast, dinner, and supper. Anybody remember when it was that? <laughs> it was our duty to wash the dishes and dry the dishes and put them up. Anybody, anybody been there besides me? <laughs> and I always hurried. I ate fast and I always hurried so I could get to wash because I hated drying. <laughs> it's always a race. Anybody else get in a race with any of your siblings? You know, we need to have reflections on what God has done for us. I trust that as I've been talking this morning and my, my goal in all of this is to get your mind back thinking about how God has directed you, how he has led you, how he has brought you from one place to another. You know, in that Joshua 4, 7, the last part of that verse says, these stones will stand as a memorial among the people for Israel forever. You know, remembering is good. Remembering the special times that God has brought you something. God has walked you through. You know, I stood right here in September of 2003 and spoke at my dad's memorial service. And then in 2007, I stood right here and spoke at mom's memorial. Many of you 
were here. And people said, how, can, how did you do that? How could you do that? It's because of God. To me, that was a him saying, okay, I got you. You can, you can take care of this. You can do this. So many of you, many times you've wondered how you have been able to, to accomplish something that you've accomplished in your life. And when you stop and think about it, it's because God said, I got you. Come on now. Anybody getting anything out of this? You know, we need to share these with our children and grandchildren. I know my grandboys, every Christmas they get tired of hearing me, but I recant at Christmas time about, hey boys, all you have and all that hits here is because of Paul, Paul, my dad, and granddad, my, uh, Lynette's dad, and mom. You know, many of you are here today because of the heritage of your mother and father or your grandmother and grandfather. You know, you need to give, you need to give honor and glory to God for that. You know, Joshua said there in, Rome, in, in, jo, in Joshua 4, we will use these stones to build a memorial. We need to remind ourselves, our children and our grandchildren of the sacrifices that it's taken for our country to be where it is and the sacrifices that it's taken for us to be where we are spiritually. I realize that I stand here today on the shoulders of, of, of four men. Kenneth Turner, my junior boy's Sunday school teacher, nine to, my nine, 10, and 11 years old. My past first pastor, my pastor, Reverend Leonard Wood. My dad, Kenneth E. Hagan, and my father-in-law, Vernon E. Tipton. And I remember those guys. I remember what they, what they put into my life. And I'm here because of that today. You need to remember why you're where you are today. It just didn't happen. God had a plan, and he still has a plan for you to follow. I look across the congregation, and I see many people that I've known for many years, and I've, I've watched you go from different triumphs to different things, and, you know, I mean, I'm seeing Shekinah Glory sitting over there, and I watched them, they came to school, and, and what God has done. You know, and I look and I begin to see different ones and I, I can say, oh, thank God. Thank God. Because families have been blessed. People have been blessed because of you. But you, it's not you. It's all God. You had to do some work, but it was God that made it happen. He told these, stone, these stones are there so the remembrance of what God did. I know you enjoyed that message today. But you know, we were talking about Rhema in the beginning and what we do. Hey, you can go to rhema.org and it, there's, it's everything we do. Yes. There is, there is, you can read the Word of Faith magazine online. There's daily devotion. There's articles. You can download the Word of Faith. You can, you can go on demand there and watch Rhema Praise or the church yes. services. 
Uh, now, we have a Rhema USA app for the iPhone, the iPad, uh, Android, Google Play, all of that. But we yes. live stream every every service is found on the YouTube, the uh, the Rama channel. Yes. Or you can go to Rama.tv or you can go to Facebook Live and get our church services. Uh, we also have a Roku channel. Yes. We, we got over 70,000 subscribers on our Roku channel. Yes. Uh, Craig has a podcast. That's right. That and, and you can find out all this from information if you just go to rhema.org. Now I was talking about down, downloads a while ago, just a moment ago. We have a free download for you that you can go at, to the online study center at rhema.org and it's a free download. Don't blame God. That's right. So you can go right there right now. It's free. You can get it. Now we have other things you can download, but uh, there, there's a there's a charge for those. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> and you can access uh, Dad Kennedy Hagen's timeless teaching on Rama.org. Uh, there, if you want to know anything about us, go to Rama.org. That's right. As we leave today, we would like to let you know if you have a testimony, if you have prayed a sinner's prayer with us, if you have been healed through the, the television broadcast yes. or any other thing, we would like to hear from you. Now, what do they have to do to let us know about it? You just email us at testimony at rhema.org. Because, you know, sometimes we like to share testimonies here uh, on Rhema Pray. So we love testimonies. Yes, we like the yes. testimonies. Well, We've got to go for today, but we'll be looking forward to being with you the next time on Rhema Praise. But we want to thank you for helping us to bring hope, hope help, help, and, and healing, healing to, to the, the world. world. This is the day of salvation. Glory to God. We will rejoice and be glad. It is a day of deliverance. It is a day of safety. It is a day of preservation. Hallelujah! This is The Day, a classic DVD by Kenneth E. Hagan. Plus, Foundations for Faith, a powerful study guide by Kenneth E. Hagan. And How to Fulfill Your Divine Destiny, an anointed book by Kenneth W. Hagan. The book, the study guide, and the DVD can all be yours today for a gift of only $45 or more by calling 888-PRAISE-8. Or you can log on anytime, day or night, at rhema.org to order. For Canadian orders, go to rhemacanada.org. Do it today. Thank you for watching Rama Praise with Kenneth and Lynette Hagan. Kenneth, Lynette, and Rama Bible Training College are committed to reaching the entire world with the gospel of Jesus Christ and training laborers for the end time harvest. If you have prayer requests or would like more information about Rama, please call, write, or visit rama.org. Thank you for being with us today and for your faithful support. And remember, there is hope help and healing for a hurting world.